Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason, I'm bored already before I even, just the same introduction every time Welcome to Let Me Buy You to Sleep my name is Jason Newland. So yeah, this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Um, 101. So, we passed the century, ladies and gentlemen. We passed the century. So, here's to another 100 episodes. And this has been going for a year, pretty much. Yeah, I think I started it about a year ago, probably February, March time last year. And it's now the end of February 2019. So please only listen to this <sighs> when you can safely close your eyes and if you are watching on YouTube. Please only watch when you can safely close your eyes and please subscribe. And I'd like to thank, I'm going to move some stuff around about me. I'd like to thank those of you both on podcasts, you know, that listen to me on the podcasts, wherever it may be, uh, iTunes, Spotify whether you're listening on my website, jasonnewland.com, or whether you're watching the videos on YouTube. Um, thank you. Thank you for your support. And thank you for getting me here to the 101st episode. Because I'll be honest with you, if no one had been listening to these, I would have quit ages ago. And by quit, I, don't, I wouldn't have quit doing the audio recordings I just wouldn't have continued with these particular ones you know the let me bore you to sleep because you know I've done seasons I've done uh, specific things in the past lots of different ones like healing words uh, what's it hypno chats hypnotic buffet so I've done these uh, you know, daily hypnosis. I've done these things where, you know, I thought maybe I'll continue doing them for a long time. And I've done some of them for a few months. Um, but then, I don't know, it's not so much that people weren't listening, because they were. Uh, and on YouTube, I was getting quite a few views for the hypnotic buffets and hypno chats in the past but because most of a lot of my podcast well most of my podcasts are on Spreaker and I get to see the really kind of detailed statistics and I've, I've kind of seen how the audiences increased I mean daily it's increasing um, so it's really good. I'm really appreciating that. Um, another thing is my SoundCloud podcast is back online. Uh, I didn't actually delete the podcast. I cancelled it so that it was going to run out in three days' time. And I, I think I contacted most of my followers on there to tell them to go to Spreaker uh, and I made all the sessions private so people couldn't listen to anything and just put a big banner saying go to Spreaker with a, you know, with a link well over the, since yesterday or the day before I've uploaded nearly a thousand didn't realise I had that many recordings so it's 955 or something uh, recordings that I've uploaded to SoundCloud and uh, it's all up and running again 
it's, it was still up and running just there wasn't anything to listen to because I put everything onto private as well as deleting quite a lot so now I've just re-uploaded everything and it's going to look a bit weird because I had 51,000 down uh, plays on there and now when you look at it it's going to think wait a minute how can there's 51,000 plays and then you look at some of the audios and there's only two or three plays on each one it's like huh so as I've uploaded them I've had about nearly 3,000 I think plays in the last couple of days but that's pretty normal when I sort of upload new stuff to SoundCloud I get a lot of uh, I don't know why actually but I seem to get a lot of plays um, quite quickly but it's mildly boring isn't it to tell you about that the I I think I did the 55th episode of Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis so that's my 55th so only 45 away from the 100 on that one which is just over so what we end of the month so that'll be April by April I might have hit the 100 which will be weird but then by April I might have a hundred and thirty or whatever of these. So it'd be interesting to see. I don't know how many days so we'll see February now. We're at the end, I think it's the it's either the twenty fifth or the twenty sixth of, of February two thousand and nineteen. I'll be honest, I lose track of the days. I spend a lot of the day in bed today. Um, which is a little bit wasteful because it's been, statistically, it's been the hottest day uh, in February that we've ever had in this country since records began. They love doing They are the news and the weather loves that. Don't they? Oh, this is the... You know, all the way through January this is the hottest day of the year this is the coldest day of the year it's like yeah it's the 1st of January of course it's the hottest day of the year it's going to be the hottest, the coldest, the windiest, the wettest everything, it's the 1st of January the most poos have been done of the year you know, the most food's been eaten of the year it's the first of the month of the first of the year. It's first of January. The most showers have had been done in a year. You know, just okay. I'll stop. I'll stop now. I've calmed down. All right, back on track. It's fine. Everything's fine. So yeah, apparently today, or yeah, it's still, still, still is Monday. It's about half ten in the evening. When I finish recording this, not that it's very it, what well, that you'd probably be interested. In, I don't even know why I'm telling you this, but I'm going to eat some ice cream and watch The Walking Dead. Uh, this week's edition, which just came out tonight. So yeah, that's that's my plan. That's going to be my little reward for. You know, sometimes I can't be bothered to make a recording, but when I start, it's just it's fairly comes together fairly nicely, usually. Although someone said to me the other day that this is just easy. Doesn't take any effort to do these recordings and I'm putting no effort in there's, there's effort involved there's um, I don't know well, there's effort after the event there's the 
production you know it's the editing side although <laughs> to be honest the editing involves uh, why well, I upload the audio to Spreaker I'm using the Spreaker app to record this got a microphone on my label my label <laughs> my labia not my labia but you know what? what is it the, the bit at the top of your um <laughs> Uh, like near your neck, you know the of your top. It's not a labia, is it? Is it la la label, lapel, patel, lapel? Well, the microphone basically clips on there. I mean, it doesn't have to go there. I could put it on my socks, but I wouldn't be able to hear myself probably. And that attaches to the phone and. Uh, use the app to record I can record live so I can stream live uh, but I don't do that too often just because I don't need the added pressure to be fair you know if, if someone knocks at the door I can press I can continue recording go and see the person and then come back and just edit it out at the end. I can't I can't do that if I'm live. And it's just easier. I just I prefer to just relax, you know. So I upload it to Spreaker and then I download it from Spreaker to my laptop and then I edit the audio on an audio editing software and usually all I need to do is just cut the beginning and cut the end you know because I always leave a space I always leave maybe 10 15 20 seconds before I talk and at the end as well sometimes I'll mutter some stuff and you know cough and just sneezed I actually right near the end of your, uh, it was this morning I did the deep sleep whisper session 55 um, and I was right near the end and I could feel a sneeze coming on and I thought well, I could just end this but it wasn't the right time to end it because Today's session was more of a chat and talk, a guidance rather than an actual um, you know it's some of the recordings I do the deep sleep ones there's the whisper ones is it ends with me like whisp well, I'm always whispering, but it ends with a real kind of gentle ending. I'm not saying that sometimes, you know, I do different endings. I don't have like a drum roll or anything, you know, cymbals. They don't do anything like that. But sometimes I'll say goodbye, you know, thank you, see you next time. I don't do it so much on them ones, but sometimes I do. And today was one of those times when I was going to sort of come to an end and say, see you next time or just you know wind it down but I sneeze and, I, and I, it was a proper it was really loud but not sp it wasn't a sprayy one it wasn't you know when you're standing on a beach and the the waves you know the waves are coming and you get the spray from the from the from the the sea. Sometimes you don't get the you don't get any spray at all. It was like that. It was just it's like it was an internal. It was external, and then it kind of internally went internal sneeze. I don't know what that was about. I kind of sneezed inside myself. You know, years ago, I remember, I think it was about 19, probably early 90s, 
It was in the papers saying that sneezing is like having an orgasm. No, it's not. That's all I've got to say on that one. It's like having an... The only, the only really, yeah, you might have to wipe yourself afterwards, but that's, other than that, it's not, it's not, there's a bit, you know, I've sneezed, or we've all sneezed, and yeah, you get, it can be nice, but, you know, I never had to light a cigarette after sneezing, even when I used to smoke, I'd, I, I don't now but when I did I never used to have to light a cigarette like sneeze like two or three times like oh where's the lighter oh I need to no never it was never just so yeah um, I'm trying to rewind I don't know where I got onto sneezing oh I sn- yeah I sneezed during this recording, but right at the end, it's, uh, uh, I had to edit it out. Luckily, with such things like coughing or sneezing or you know any kind of loud sounds, it shows up on the audio by looking at it. You can see the the up and down of the audio I don't know if that makes sense but you can see there's a big spike when it comes to like a sneeze or a cough or any other noises made from the body and I mean some noises I just leave in but when it comes to sneezes it's it's a little bit it was a little bit too well especially if I'm doing this I'm doing a whisper recording I'm like and now you can yeah, la, la, blah 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 whisper 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 and then suddenly you hear a sneeze like a massive sneeze it's yeah I don't think it would be very good so I edit yeah. I always feel so tired when I do these recordings oh, so I edited it out and I do the fade in at the beginning, fade out at the end. I'm learning, learning a few little tricks along the way when it comes to editing stuff. Things that I've not learned, but I've come across by accident, you know. I thought, ah, oh, that's interesting. I never really, th- I, sort of using a tool for something other than what it's supposed to be used for or you know f- or I hadn't thought about using it for something different so it's uh I suppose it's kind of similar to using a fork to the first person that thought, you know what, I can actually use a fork to to mash potato. Don't need a potato masher. I'm not a big fan of potato mashers. You know the the ones with the handles and the metal ones not some not so bad. I don't mind the metal ones as such. But the plastic ones if you I reckon if you went around the country, any country that has potatoes, um, I don't know if all countries do have potatoes, uh, or even have mashed potatoes, you have to let me know. Just leave a comment, because I know that people from all around the world are listening to this. If you don't have mashed potato where you live, I don't mean... You can't buy where well, you can buy mashed potato, but in packets in supermarkets you can actually buy mashed potato and heat it up. But you know, when I say mashed potato, it's not something that you you pick off a tree. It's, it's 
but if you don't have mashed potato where you live, then leave a comment. Um, and while you're at it, you know, maybe tell me how great I am. <laughs> I'm gonna keep on about that. I'm gonna try and coax people into saying that they like me. Just pretend, just pretend. So pretend it's a relationship. And you can use forks to do the mashed potato. And it's a bit scrapey. It's a bit scratchy, you know, to the saucepan. It's a little bit scratchy and scrapey. You know, it's it just, you might wear the saucepan out a little bit quicker than it would have ordinarily have been worn out. And you might have a few little bits of, I don't know, the, you know, stuff that stops the food from sticking to the saucepan. Maybe you'll have a little bit of that material in mixed in with your food, but um, other than that, it's you know forks are quite good for mashed potato. Not so, I don't know about big forks. I quite like forks that are thin. But I'm just thinking, because you know you can get forks that are thin. You be you can get those other forks that are quite. I want to say it's like not arthritic but they're just quite stumpy quite big swollen kind of forks the, I think they're quite old fashioned <laughs> and you can get the really thin thin forks that are just but then you can get forks that are quite sort of somewhere in between the forks I've got at the moment yeah they're not they're not expensive they're pretty cheap I don't have anything that's expensive I think it's everything I've got is pretty 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 cheap I don't have a, a lot of it's just you make do don't you you make do in life. It's if you can't afford a Ferrari, then you get a car that you can afford. Because I wonder why that's why Ford did so well. Because it's, it sounds like a Ford. I can afford that. Can you afford that? Yeah, I can afford that. And like Misty the A off. Yeah, I can afford. I can afford that car. Ah. I um I don't drive. I had driving lessons. Is it it's gonna I I don't know, I can't believe I'm telling you this. Well, I had a lesson. I I had driving lessons with two different places. And one was in London when I lived in London as a young man. A very, very, very young man, twenty years old, I think I was at the time and because in London and I, I'm being um, how do I generalising because nothing's always anything is it but uh, in London where I used to live the roads weren't big they were, some of them were long but they weren't very wide yet there was cars parked both sides so it was a case of driving only one car could get down at a time and other cars had to wait and they, it was a constant like giving way to each other so you could actually get down the road which is I think a really rubbish way to to live really but I suppose people get used to it, don't they? If that's what they're used to. <laughs> you get used to the things you're used to. And But I did it and I thought, you know what? This is rubbish. I mean, where I lived, I could walk to work quicker than the bus travelled. 
I could actually walk and the bus would be ahead of me and then I'd walk past the bus as it was stuck in traffic. And I'd get to where I was going before the bus even got there. It's, you know, it's really... It's handy if you don't want to walk, obviously. Or if you're, you know, you need to sit down and buses are great in that situation. But where I live now, I live like 10 miles away from anything. The nearest town is like about 10 miles away. So it's too far to walk. I've done it. I have walked it, but I didn't get that little tingly feeling of... uh, Accomplishment that you thought I might have done. Didn't really know. It's a lot. Also, I get a bit sweaty sometimes. You know, when, I, when I'm walking and I've got a big jacket on, and even though it's cold, I need the jacket on, but it's like this, this a whole different. I don't know, it's, it's like there's a, a different. Um, terrain going on inside the jacket so outside the jacket is like you know two degrees or really three degrees um four degree you know maybe minus even so it's cold outside but inside it's it's very strange it's you know it's like being it's like it's the the North Pole outside, but inside I'm kind of in Australia, and it's really warm, and my armpits are like little beaches and barbecues and stuff. So it's a different climate, and it's it's not not very pleasant because then when I get I get to where I'm going take my hat off I've been sweating it looks like I just got out of the shower it doesn't because if if I look like that people would run plus I don't wear my hat in the shower imagine wearing a hat in a shower and you might say yeah what about a shower hat what about a shower hat well they're not they're called shower caps aren't they yeah, yeah, but hats are called caps. Caps and hats, similar thing, innit? Because it goes on your head, innit? Yeah, yeah, cats and hats and pats and wax, me. You're just sounding silly now. I know. I can't help it. Okay. Bye then. So, yeah, I... I don't like the plastic... potato meshes because... If you, this is what my point was going to be, if you travelled all the way around the country and you went into 10,000 houses, yeah, and collected 10,000 potato meshes, plastic ones, it would take ages. <laughs> it would take forever. No, if you did that, maybe not ten thousand. Let's say a thousand. Say a thousand. Say a hundred. Even it doesn't have to be. You know, it doesn't have to go all out. It could be a hundred, or maybe a thousand, five hundred. I bet you those plastic potato meshes will have bits in them. Those holes will have bits. They won't be clean. They won't be the kind of cleanliness that you'd expect. They they will look a bit like a teenager's in between a teenager's toes. I say teenager. I'm just remembering myself when I was a teenager. I constantly had black bits in between my toes. My feet stunk. It was terrible. And I haven't had black bits between my toes since I've been an adult. 
But when I was a, when I was a teenager, it's like fungus was growing. Now I'm not saying that everybody that has a plastic mashed potato or potato masher has fungus growing in the holes or in between the holes of the potato masher. I'm not saying that, okay? Because that might be considered rude. And, you know, I'm, if there's one thing I'm not, and that's considerate. So I don't want to be, uh, you know, saying that. But, you know, I've got one, and you can't get rid of this stuff. It's stuck. Seriously, if we ever run out of cement, use mashed potato. We could build houses, pyramids. Why would we want to build pyramids? Why? What was even the point of building pyramids? Do you think they just built them for, you know, one day people are going to look at these? I reckon pyramids were built, right, by somebody that didn't really know what he was doing. I think there's someone that just like was it was one of those you know like like a bridge that just collapses you know it's like unless that was wrong we really can't believe we gave him the job sorry Bob you're going to have to go back to road sweeping those those houses that you built well the pointy ones yes the pointy ones um not really any good why not they're pointy yeah yeah I know they're pointy they have no windows but they're pointy okay fair enough it's the there's a pointy mop there going pointy yeah yeah, okay see ya so it's I don't think pyramids really you know wonder of the world Mistake of the world, I'd say. Possibly. I don't know. Pointy. You know, it's, where's the windows? Where's the driveway? Where's the door? Where's the garden? I mean, it's, it's, it's in a desert. There's no garden. I mean, yeah, kids love sand pits. But at some point, no matter how much you love a sand pit, you want to get out of the sand pit. And go and do something else. You don't want to live in the sandpit. You don't want to sleep in the sandpit. You just want to play in the sandpit. Then get out. And do something else. So yeah. I think sand is not the best garden. I might be wrong though. If you live in a place where you've got sand everywhere. Then... um, Here's a question. If you do live somewhere where there's sand everywhere, so if you do live in a desert, if you're listening to this and you live in a desert, do you ever make sand castles? I don't know, I'm just, just wondering. Again, you can leave a little comment, just let me know. If you if you live in the desert, and that doesn't have to necessarily mean uh, it could be anywhere. It could be it's Arizona. As uh, they've got deserts in different parts of the world, haven't they? Arabia, uh, Tennessee. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. Um, France. I don't know if they've got deserts in France. Deserts in Belgium. I went to Belgium once. Actually, I went to Belgium three times, I think. Twice. Oh, we went there when I was a kid on a ferry. Yep, we didn't swim. Uh, It was on a ferry, and it was the Belgium ferry. Andre's awakened. He's running around now. 
Oh, if you want to see a cute picture, I just posted a picture of Andre on my Facebook page. It's, he's asleep. He's just, it's just part of his face hanging out of the of his bag. That sounds wrong, but part of his face. Um, his face is intact, but just the the way he was just. Yeah, have a look at it. He's asleep. It's very cute. It's very cute. Um, he's been very tactile with me lately. A lot more so. Not quite sure why. That like earlier, I was having a little sleep. Probably, probably between six thirty and eight, something like that. I just went and laid down for a little bit, and he was asleep. And then I heard him. I kind of. I was only partly asleep. I heard him just like run into the into the bedroom and he jumped onto the bed and he started to like sniff, sniff me like he does and he started to nibble at my fingers and have a bit in between my finger and my, my thumb and my first finger he likes that little bit of meat in between them so he likes to like nibble on that a little bit and lick that and then He he started licking my lips. It was like he just wanted me to be awake. He wanted me to, I suppose, to, to do something. And he started biting my eyes, like the top of my eye, not biting, just nibbling, just gently. And uh, if he bit me, I'd, I'd be in hospital. He's. He just nibbles very, very gently, but it's very, very sensitive area, to be fair. And uh, so I gave him a cuddle, and as soon as I did that, he tries to get away. He's, uh, he wants everything on his terms. He does. So I just grabbed him, and I wouldn't let go, and he came like that, which I think is, get off. What do you want? Go away. I sometimes think he's waiting for me just to die so he can eat me. That's what he does when he climbs on the bed. He's just like nibbling just to see if I, I react. If not, then he can go and get his knife and fork. Bless him. So I went to Belgium and yeah twice, the first time I was very young, went with my dad, went with the family basically and my stepmom, not a, not a fan of boats, really not a fan of boats and uh, she shared her uh, she 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 shared her disapproval with being on the boat with the sea. <laughs> yeah, she spent a lot of time talking to the sea. Had her head hanging over the side of the boat. So yeah, I don't know what she was talking about, but um, now Andre's climbing on me now. Right, let's have to move the phone out of the way so we don't get onto it. What do you want, mate? Hey, no, you can't go on the microphone. You've got to behave yourself. Yes, you do. Are oh, you going to lick lick my in between my thumb and my finger? He's usually okay, but I've got a friend who does that with, and he bites. He really bites hard. Oh, his new thing now, because he's got a girlfriend, and basically his girlfriend is an old slipper of mine. But that's, I've talked about this before, it's the head and the shoulders of his girlfriend. And he, he he's very creative, and he finds something else to use as the lower body. Which is probably no different to what a dog does. It's just it's kind of the same kind of thing. Um, 
but there's something about the slipper this he just actually drives him uh is is he has got a relationship with that slipper so uh so sometimes he uses carrier bags for the bottom half and he scrunches it all up and just spends ages sometimes up to an hour uh, doing his thing but recently he started using one of his cuddly toys here's the little sneeze there and it's a little blue toy that I bought him I can't remember when he's got loads of loads of toys dotted all over the place and he started using the blue toy as the the body of his girlfriend and I just I don't know why but I just thought that was so cute it's, the, it's as if he like brought home his first girlfriend you know it's like daddy I'd like you to meet Sarah oh hello Sarah Hello, I'm just going to go and take Sarah into the bedroom and introduce her to Polly. Who's Polly? What's the Polly's head? That's, that's my girlfriend's head. Sarah's my girlfriend's body. Oh, okay. Polly, because maybe it's a polyamorous relationship. God, I love, I don't like puns at all. I don't, I'm really a non-pun person. I don't really like them. I don't dislike them, I just don't. I did one day, actually. Um, that I was quite pleased with. The other. It was a few months back. I was with my friend. And... I think we're trying to say well, what is the the name of this person, celebrity or something, and uh, he said, "Is it is it saying him Eva?" Which so the best way to say it is it Eva? I said, well, and I, I came back quick as a flash. About ten minutes later, I don't know Eva or Iva. It's fine. I felt really good about myself. Uh, Three, three seconds, I reckon. Don't really do puns, but that was kind of like a punny, a punny-ish kind of moment. I think if you do puns, you need to, or if to appreciate puns, you kind of need to be a, a student of the English language or whatever language you you talk, because I'm sure there's puns in other languages as well. I'm sure, it's not just an English thing. Or that might be, I don't know. And I'm not really a student of anything. Uh, so I, just, no, I know enough words to get by. But I definitely could not, I could not teach English, I don't think. I don't know, could it? No, I don't. Although, you know, I do. Well, did someone say once that the, the best way, the best universal language is love? So if you, if you're in love with somebody, you can learn their language much easier than by any books or courses because you really want to understand what they're talking about and what they're saying that's why I've had a few girlfriends that have been from other countries because I find the relationship lasts a lot longer when the person I'm with doesn't know what I'm saying and once they start to understand what I'm talking about I usually kind of it's the end of the relationship, but, but I usually get a good few weeks in. 
some people say communications is the backbone of any relationship. Well, it's really weird just as we said that Andre's coming holding his girlfriend's head the slipper and he makes that noise did you hear that? I don't know if you could hear that in the background it's funny it's very funny some of the sounds that he makes and you know because he's a big boy now he's, he's over three years old and what sept August, September, October, November, December, January, three and a half. But he still squeaks. <laughs> he still squeaks like really like high pitched. And I'm kind of waiting for his voice to break. I don't think it's ever going to happen. You know, I think of him as like a big boy because he was so tiny when I got him, and now he's long. He's big. He's heavy and. He's not big, but you know he's big compared to what he was, and and when I tread on him, you know, I've got to catch him sometimes. But when I get to tread on him, no, I don't. I don't purposely do it. But he's he's just like squeaks, and or just generally when he's like playing with me or he wants me to let him go or like you just you know, really kind of squeaky that's cute this doesn't but it doesn't suit him because he's too old now I just I just know I just thought his voice would break I thought he'd you know when I was a kid when I was little had a a dog and I feel it was mainly just my dad wanted to appease his wife and wanted to, he, he got a dog, I suppose. Either that way he wanted a dog, I don't know. But he got like, and he got a, a St. Bernard, which, which is, that... For to, if you're gonna get a dog, for a first dog, a Saint Bernard is probably not the fir, the best choice. If it's your first ever dog, because you you need to you need some preparation for that. Um, I think I'm not saying I'm not. I'm not comparing getting a St. Bernard puppy with uh, doing a triathlon. Is it a triathlon? Triath triathlon, or you know, the Olympics. It's not. It's not the same as competing in an Olympic an Olympic uh, competition. But the point is, if you're going to compete in the Olympics you need to have some kind of preparation beforehand. You know, some smaller contests leading up to the Olympics, learning the basics, you know, but then training probably for years and years before you get to that level. That's St. Bernard's. It's an understatement to say, and you might call them St. Bernard's, it's an understatement to say that they are big dogs. Because they are huge, huge dogs. The weight of an adult, the weight of a big, large adult. You know, probably within about a year of. Um, that's my finger, by the way. Bit of uh, sound effects there. And. We had a big house. We did have a big... I mean, there's a lot of, of us, so we needed it. There was... 
There was only one room that wasn't being used most of the time, one spare bedroom, because that that was just for visitors and stuff. But we had how many bedrooms? Is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there was seven bedrooms. And then as, as things changed, it got to the point where, because one of the bedrooms was being used as a games room. And my little brother, he had the little room and I had another room downstairs and then my two older brothers were upstairs. But then the little room became like an office or a solarium. I think there was a, like a, a sunbed in there. I never went under the sunbed. Um, but I think that's, yeah, there was a sunbed in there, I'm pretty sure. And my little brother moved into the room that I was in before. So it was a bigger room. Plus, he was little. He needed more space to play and stuff. And I moved upstairs into my oldest brother's room, and he moved next door into the bigger room. And then. I was ashamed to lose that playroom because that was quite cool. We had a table, tennis table in there, and pool and snooker table. Had a, it was all one thing. Not not like it wasn't like uh, Transformers, you know, just transformed into different things. But the, there was a snooker table, not like, not full size. It wasn't that big, but it was still a nice size. But the table tennis table was built specifically so that it fitted over the top of the snooker table. Sounds like I was rich, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah so I just let's go. Should, should we go to the snooker room, shall we? Mm, yeah. Have a brandy? Mm. Wasn't quite like that. Um, brandy. I think I had brandy once. I used to work with this bloke and he was from, from Jamaica. And he, he was a bit like a, he kind of took me under his wing a bit. Because he was just really, he was probably in his 50s and he was wise. And for me, it was like a wise old man because I was like maybe 22, 23. And he said, yeah, son. I said, Right, Alf, Alfie, or whatever his name was. He calm down, man. Have a brandy. And I said, all right, then. He said, no, I haven't actually got a brandy on me. When you go home, try a brandy. So I did, because I really liked him, and he used to calm me down, because I used to be a little bit of a... a bit... Uh, a little bit full on maybe sometimes when I was younger and he used to kind of bring me down to earth very calm I liked him a lot and he'd say and he'd, he'd, he'd give me these little wise sayings and these uh, what do you say to, uh, don't, yeah, don't, don't walk too fast so that you end up treading on the other person's feet I said, okay. He said, get off my feet, please. No, he didn't say that. Uh, but I, I don't know what he said. I can't remember anything. Uh, but I did try brandy, like in his, out of, I suppose, kind of respect for him. Just because I did, so I really liked him. And so I had this brandy and it just, was weird. It's not really for. 
I'm not really a spirits person like alcoholic spirits and love poltergeists but I'm not really into brandy whiskey can't do I'll tell you about that another time that's a big story about that but brandy no I've never had a bad it didn't have a bad experience with it I just I tried it out I got like a little half bottle or quarter or whatever um definitely warmed up my cockles um, but other than that so I went to Belgium and we got there and it took so long to get there and the weather was so choppy that we didn't end up going off the boat we just came straight back so that, that was the first journey the second journey I went in 1988 and I went with some friends from, well, people that I worked with. I worked in this warehouse. Um, well, I worked in a company that did, uh, that made electric meters. And my job, my first job there was, because I worked there three times, was to pack meters. So I put the meters in the boxes doing it by number you know so crossing them off and and then putting them onto a pallet uh, spin wrapping the pallet uh, you know making the boxes all that kind of stuff uh, loading unloading lorries and you know anything pretty much that involved in the job and so we all decided a few of us went let's go to Belgium for the day one Saturday or Sunday so we did it we all went up and it was quite weird because there's probably about five or six of us I think and I've never been the most travelled person and that was my first time abroad ever that I'd actually set foot on uh, I was going to say foreign soil but you know on a yeah outside of my own country and well I had been to Wales and Scotland and Newcastle I did end up going to Ireland but that was later on uh, when I was 24 so yeah I went to Belgium and there was a couple of incidences one was we went to to town is it Zibruge Zibruge or I don't know and we were walking down some roads and one of the lads was walking f further ahead or he he turned a corner and he started yelling and we're like what's going on he said look, look. and he was he came running up to us and said there's a lady in the window and she's naked and uh, so that was oh, obviously we all went and had a look no she she wasn't naked she was she had, like, had a had uh, per, uh, she had clothes on but not not a lot and it's like I didn't know what to make of all that stuff because we don't have that kind of thing in England and um, as far as I know and so that was interesting and then we carried on we got a burger in a place and it was like an ice cream place it was really nice but the food was raw the burgers were raw which is a bit weird it's, I don't know if it's you know I'm, I'm used to cooked food so that was a bit I'm not sure if we got ill I can't remember but then on the ferry back um, I don't know what happened there must be something in the water but the yeah I think it was in the cinema we were watching the film 
and people started trashing the place and it was like a big um, very unusual a lot of uh, weirdness occurred on the trip back so it was quite a good trip it was quite fun I quite liked it um, but one of the things I always liked and I even when I went to Ireland I went there I suppose four trips four four ferry trips you know there and back twice no, there and back. Yeah, there and back twice. Um, I loved being on the ferry as it was leaving England and seeing the throth of the propeller, you know, behind the ship. And just... I remember when I was younger, I used to feel the... I think especially when I went to France. So I went from Dover to France in 1989. And I could just feel the tension leaving me as I was just sailing away from Dover. But that might be more to do with Dover than anything else, I don't know. But it was so nice just to be moving away, going somewhere different, somewhere new. to a new land <laughs> right I'm going to go hopefully this has been nice and boring for you I'll speak to you next time bye